What's up guys? Justin here with the SketchUpEssentials.com back with another SketchUp extension tutorial for you. So in today's video, we're going to talk about a way to create a complex bent shape within SketchUp. We're going to use a number of different extensions including Joint Push Pull, um, Shape Bender, Fredo Corner, a whole bunch of different extensions. So before we get started, I want to thank my two newest supporters on Patreon. So big thank you to Michael Nordsted and Charles Prouty. So Patreon, as most of you know, is the website where you can support creators that you like on YouTube. One of the perks of being a supporter on Patreon is you get to vote on the extension that I cover every week. And we've kind of branched out, and now we're uh, both voting on new extensions to cover, as well as tutorials for extensions that we've covered before. So if you want to vote on some of the stuff that I'm going to cover every week, make sure you check out that link in the notes down below. Now let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so in order to do this, you're going to need a few different extensions loaded on your computer. So for the method that I'm showing, you're going to need joint push pull you're gonna want Fredo corner uh, round corner would also work you're gonna want true bend and shape bender and I will link to in the notes to uh, both tutorials and also links to the downloads on those down below if you want to learn how to use any of those individually um, I've always been kind of fascinated by the idea of uh, kind of tying the different extensions together and so what we're gonna do is we're gonna start off and we're gonna create kind of a tunnel or a tube shape and so what I want though is I don't necessarily want like a circle that I've extruded along um, like an axis. What I want to do instead is I just want to create a couple different boxes. So I'm just going to use the rectangle tool um, in order to draw a rectangle just like this. So tap the R key and then you can tap the left arrow key to lock that to this axis. And then I'm just going to make a copy of this um, about whatever the width is that I want that to be and then I'm going to reverse the faces. And then from there I'm just going to draw a box across the top. And so basically what we have is a very simple tunnel-ish shape. And now what I want to do is I want to use Fredo Corner in order to round off the corners. So I'm just going to select this whole thing. I'm going to click on Round from Fredo Corner. And you can come in here and kind of adjust the way this is going to look. One of the things I like about Fredo Corner is that you can preview by clicking this little eye right here. Then you can click and drag up and down to see what your different offsets are going to look like. So in this case, it looks like about 12 inches is right. So I'm actually going to come up here and I'm going to type 12 inches in here to set my offset and then I'm just going to click. So basically all that did is just came in here and rounded off our face. So from there we have a very simple shape that we can come in and we can start uh, basically creating some extrusions along or some ridges along using joint push pull. And the way I want to do that is I actually want to take the end geometry and I want to use the move tool in copy mode to take this end you can see how I've selected the geometry from that end and I'm using the move tool in copy mode to move that all the way down to this end. And so remember when you use the move tool in copy mode you have the option to create equally spaced numbers of objects by typing in divided and then a number. So in this case I typed in divided by 12, divided by 13, divided by 21. And we'll go ahead and leave it on 21 for right now. That should create 21 of these uh, different shapes. And so now what we've done is we've broken this up into individual faces. And the reason this is important is now that gives us faces that we can use joint push pull to basically push pull these outward. So what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to come in here and I'm going to select every other face that we've created. So I'm just doing a shift click. And what I don't like about this is I'm going to bend this and then I'm going to kind of put the bent copies together and so these need to be continuous. And so you can see how if you want this to actually be continuous right now, it's not going to work quite right because there's going to be an extra ridge here when the two pieces butt up together. So I'm just going to come in here, I'm just going to delete off the end. So that now when I do this, when I have all of these selected, the pieces will line up together nicely. So I have all of these selected. Now what I want to do is I want to use joint push pulls, joint push pull function in order to thicken these. And so a couple things you want to note, you want to make sure first of all that you're finishing is that set to thicken because if you don't do that, then it's going to delete out the existing face. So you want this set to thicken. And then you also want to make sure that your borders are set to contour. You don't want them set to grid because then it won't hide all this geometry. And the other thing you can do is you can either select the generate as a group or not. It doesn't really matter in this case. But all I'm going to do is I'm just going to select these and I'm just going to click and drag 
And if you remember what joint push pull does is it allows me to thicken those edges. So you can see how I can kind of click and drag to see what those edges are going to look like. And when I let up and click, it's going to generate all of this thickened geometry. So now this thickened geometry is in here and we can use this as our shape. And you'll notice that these got created as groups for right now. That should be okay, but you could also create them as individual geometry if you wanted to. And one thing that's going to get a little weird on the back side of these faces when we bend this is right now, for example, if I was to move this off to the side, you can see how the whole inside of this is the back side of the faces because the outside is the front side of the faces. So if you wanted to, you could come in here and you could select that and apply like a white color or something like that so that you don't have weird alternating faces in here. You're also going to get a little bit of Z fighting on the inside. So Z fighting is just when two faces, two faces share the same space in 3D. You get this weird kind of shape in here. So if you wanted to, you could come in here and you could delete all of those out or kind of do whatever you want with those. For right now, I think I'm just going to select this whole thing and I'm just going to apply a white color to it. And depending on what you're trying to do with this, you may have to do something different with that. But for me, the white face, I think is going to work fine for right now. So now what I want to do is I want to take this object and I want to bend it. And so in order to bend it, we're going to use an extension called Shape Bender. And if you remember, when we use Shape Bender, and I will link to a video that I did last week about Shape Bender. But if you remember with Shape Bender, what you need is you need a line that's drawn along the red axis. So that's your baseline. So I'm just going to click on this point. I'm just going to draw a line a little bit off to the side so I can get something kind of the same length over here. Then I'm just going to hold the shift key and draw this along the red axis so these are the same length. And so now what we have is we have a shape here or we have a line here that's going to act as our base point. And so we're also going to take the rest of this and we're going to right click and we're going to put it inside a group. And so if you remember the way Shape Bender works, if you click on this object and then you use this object, it says that sets this as your baseline. And then um, it's going to take another curve and it's going to curve this object along that based on this baseline. So we need to draw a curve. Or in this case, I'm actually going to draw a straight line because what I want this to do is I want this to bend straight up. So we're not really going to bend it along a curve as much as we're going to bend it along a Z axis. You could probably use something like Fredo scale, sh like shear tool or something like that as well. But for what I'm doing right here, I'm just going to use this line. So I'm just going to copy this line. And in this case, I'm going to draw a line up and then, a draw, and then I'm going to draw a line across. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bend this along basically this angle. And so I think this is sloped a little high for what I want. So I'm actually going to draw another line. Then I'm just going to erase all of this out. So now what I have is I have a flat line and I have a sloped line. So I'm going to select this object and we're going to use Shape Bender now to bend this so it goes up. So in order to do that, select your object, come over here and select Shape Bender. And it's going to ask you to select a line. Well, in this case, we're going to select this line right here. And then we're going to select this line, which is going to be our curve. You're going to see that you're going to get basically a preview of what this is going to look like. So you can see how this is basically taking this and it's just kind of shearing it upwards. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to hit the enter key. And so now what we have is we have basically a sloping version of this object that we created before. And we're actually not going to use helix along curve in this one. We can delete that out. Um, originally, I tried that, and that's actually not going to work all that well. But what we want to do now is we want to take this new extension from TomTom called TrueBend. And I really like this new extension from TomTom because it creates true bent geometry along an angle. And the other thing it allows you to do is it allows you to bend something 360 degrees. And so in this case, I'm going to make a copy of this off to the side. I always like to have a backup copy of my geometry. And then I'm going to click on it and I'm going to activate true bend. What true bend is going to do is that's going to allow me to bend this shape. So you can see how I can either, I can bend that either direction. You can see if I bend it this direction, everything gets kind of funky. So if I hit the inner key, you can see how that isn't really what we want. And it looks like these are actually in here as components, which is interesting. I didn't make them components. Um, I guess maybe uh, 
shape bender creates these as components so we're going to right click and we're going to make this unique so this one doesn't edit along with this one but you can see how when we bent that with true bend in one direction it got very tight and it didn't look very good but if we bend it in the other direction i want to go ahead and bend it 360 degrees so i'm going to drag it all the way this way and i'm just going to let up and i'm going to hit the enter key so you can see what that did is this bent this object in a true fashion 360 degrees. So because it created this 360 degrees, I can actually use the move tool in copy mode to copy this up so that this continues. And I could actually do that as many times as I wanted to. If I wanted to, I could come in here and I could uh, create another version of it like this. And I could actually type in times whatever. I could type in times 10. Um, looks like I click, so it's not gonna let me do that. But you could create as many copies as this as you want. And now, all I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take all of this, or I'm actually gonna use the scale tool to flip it. So I'm just gonna activate the scale tool by tapping the S key. I'm gonna click on this point right here, and I'm gonna hold the control key so that I can scale this in place. So you can see how when I scale this in place, I can scale it to negative one and keep the proportions while flipping this over. And so now you've got this cool 3D shape that's continuous all the way along this arc. And you could use this for other shapes as well, but this is kind of a building block to other things that you could do within SketchUp. So that's where I'm going to end this video. Leave a comment below. Let me know if you think of uh, some cool applications for this. I just love having that SketchUp conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. If you like what I'm doing in this channel, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Every little bit helps, even if it's only a dollar a month. So make sure you check out that link in the notes down below. But in any case, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.